sorry, uh, Mr. Conductor, sir. C excuse me. Before you continue, <clears throat> Time Journey for Wind Band is an introduction to wind orchestra and all instruments in it. Ever heard of a wind orchestra before? Ah, the youngsters probably not. You probably listen to internet music like rap, dubstep, R&B. I get that. I didn't listen to the music my parents liked when I was young. Almost every kid from every generation didn't do that. And there always have been composers, writers of music, who try to make something children would like to listen to. Something that would maybe make children want to hear more from, or would get them to make music themselves. Almost a century ago, the British composer Benjamin Britten did just that. He based his work on a theme by Sir Henry Purcell, a composer who lived in the 17th century. The theme and its variations shows us how wonderful and exciting each instrument can sound. Britten wrote his piece for symphony orchestra with violins and cellos, but the Dutch composer Harry Janse wrote his piece for wind orchestra, and he based it on the same theme Britten used. Now the opening sounded very majestic, didn't it? An entrance fit for a king. But nowadays the royal family is much more modern and lively. Listen to the orchestra playing the last part of the opening and you can see Queen Elizabeth entering the room. Then the orchestra plays the theme again and this time William and Kate enter. Did you hear the difference? Now we will take the orchestra apart. A wind orchestra has got many different instruments, but what kind of instruments are they? You can divide the orchestra into three groups, woodwind, brass and percussion. You've got instruments that can play very high notes and instruments that can play very low. We will start with the woodwind, with the flutes and piccolo. But these aren't made of wood. No. That's correct, these are metal flutes, but in the past, they were made of wood. Flutes can sound very merry and fluttery, like butterflies dancing from one flower to another. Now we get to a real wooden instrument, the oboe, all wood, except for the keys. On top you see a small pipe through which you blow. That's the reed. It looks a bit like the instrument of a snake charmer. Well, an oboe can sound like you're in the Far East on the market, but it can also sound as if you're in a boat on a lake in Scotland. The next piece has both elements. One moment you're in Scotland, and then in the Far East, and suddenly you're back again on a lake in Scotland, and, oh, there, the snake charmer with his flute, 
Oh, and the Persian market. Oh, Scotland and the tall mountains and the Persian market. The oboe has a brother. It is larger than the oboe, so it sounds lower. But there's a funny thing about its name. The French name is Cor Anglais. Aha! Oh, an English horn, the translator said. But Anglais doesn't mean English here. It refers to the French word angle. The small pipe on top is slightly bent. And it definitely doesn't look like a horn. He must have had a poor grateful French at school. The English horn sounds really beautiful, but also very melancholy. <laughs> so take out your handkerchief. Bassoons have the same type of reed as the oboe, and so they sound a little bit alike. But then, slightly more dignified and noble. Although, bassoons can do a dignified dance. Listen, and you can picture an elderly, grey-haired Spanish nobleman with his elegant lady on the dance floor. Clarinets also have brothers. The B-flat clarinet is the most common. He's got a little brother called the E-flat clarinet, or sopranino clarinet, and there's a big brother, the bass clarinet. All composers take pleasure in writing difficult melodies and fast riffs for clarinets. But in secret, they like it. They're as busy with it as a cat playing with a ball of wool.
Saxophones are a group on its own. They're not made of wood, but they belong to the woodwind family. That's because they play on a reed just like the clarinets, bassoons and oboes. Though the clarinet and the saxophone play on a single reed, and the oboe and bassoon on a double reed. You've got the alto, tenor and baritone saxophone. Sometimes a wind orchestra has a soprano saxophone and, more rarely, a bass saxophone. Saxophones sound tough and sexy, and they can swing. That's why they are so popular in jazz, rock, soul and funk. Especially for them, the composer wrote a nice Latin American bossa nova. Let's meet with the brass section. Not a splinter of wood in that group, I can tell you. They blow on a round mouthpiece from very small to quite big. Trumpets are the rascals of the orchestra. They're playful, always in for a joke. They tumble like acrobats, a tight group, quick as a wink. But the instrument has only three buttons, valves, you call them. Way much less than the keys of the woodwind. So many notes with only three valves? Listen. <laughs> Marvelous, isn't it? All those notes with three valves. The horns also have three valves. Long ago, when the trumpet was called clarion and was used to announce the entrance of a king or a knight's tournament, the horn was used for delivering the mail. A very important job then. And during the hunt, very adventurous. You can hear that in the next piece. <laughs> Trombones have a unique position within the orchestra. They don't have valves nor keys, they have a slide. Just like Dr. Reed Riches from the Fantastic Four, they can stretch and make their instrument longer and shorter, and thus they can play a glissando. Don't worry, 
they won't slide all the way through the next piece. They will play something which enables you to picture heroes arriving in a long, worthy procession. Which heroes? You may decide on that. The baritones. Ah, the baritones are the dreamers of the orchestra. Romantic, vivacious. Their official name is euphonium, which means beautiful voice. And oh, that is so true. Composers love to write lyrical melodies for them in which you can picture a tall sailing ship on the ocean or a view over mountains and valleys or a desert caravan with camels or the great Chinese wall, the pyramids in Egypt, the temples of ancient Greece. The big brother of the baritone is the tuba, the heavyweight of the orchestra. It looks almost the same as a baritone, but then twice as big. Sometimes it has its kin from the symphony orchestra standing next to it, the double bass. Tubas are the fundament of the orchestra in sound and rhythm. Together with percussion, they provide the groove. It can swing, be ominous or happy. Listen. Time for percussion. It's more than just a simple drum or cymbal. 
You've got plain percussion like a snare drum or a bass drum, and you've got melodic percussion on which you play melodies. Two different groups with one thing in common. You hit it. There are so many percussion instruments, I need a double CD to name them all. Better not do that. But I can name the instruments you will hear next. Snare drum, bass drum, cymbals, timpani, castagnettes, triangle, tom-toms, bongos, maracas, tambourine, and the melodic percussion xylophone, vibraphone, marimba, tubular bells, and glockenspiel. This is the Wind Orchestra. Has music always sounded the same as it does today? Nope. Music has changed a lot through time. We will show you how it developed through the ages by starting a long, long time ago when the Romans ruled over Europe and North Africa. You know the Romans, with their short tunics, helmets, shields and spears, marching in large columns. The horns they used sounded raw and dangerous. <laughs> Gregorian chant is vocal music from the church, which dates more than 1,400 years ago. Monks and nuns sang during the service, and they wrote it down so they could teach it to other monks and nuns. Pope Gregory I started to collect those songs and categorized them. Therefore, it got named after him, Gregorian chant. You recognize a Gregorian chant immediately. It is sung. There are no instruments. You all sing the same, unison. You sing a lot of notes to pronounce one single word. That seems funny and odd, but it sounds very mystic and sacred, and that's precisely what they wanted. The orchestra will now play a Gregorian chant. The baritones will portray the monks and the clarinets the nuns. Dona nobis 
Cię. The orchestra played very loose. Did you hear that? You couldn't hear a beat or a rhythm. The church didn't want that. It was music for prayer and meditation. If there would be a beat in it, you could hear a rhythm, and then you could do a dance to it. And that was forbidden in church. But the common people wanted to dance. And so they did, at a feast on the village square. Five hundred years ago, at the 31st of October 1517, a new sound arose in the world. Luther, a priest and a professor of moral theology, thought that the Church of Rome was corrupt and without morale. He wrote a strong protest of 95 theses. Many people agreed with him and started to follow his teachings. And that became the new sound in the world, the sound of the Protestants. Thanks to Luther, a new era started. Knowledge and art was no longer something for the church in Rome or royalty. It also became available for normal citizens. Science developed rapidly and art became more elegant and dainty. It was the beginning of the Baroque era. Buildings in those days were lushly decorated with frizzles and such, and music also became more dainty. Two composers who were the top of their trade were Johann Sebastian Bach and Georg Friedrich Händel. The music you will hear next is a fugue, very popular in those days. A fugue starts unison with a theme. The theme is then played by other instruments, higher or lower, and when you think it has disappeared, it jumps up somewhere in the orchestra. It's chasing itself like a game of tag. Fugue comes from the Latin word fugare, to flee. Notes tumble like a waterfall up and over each other, and in the end, it all comes together in a majestic finale.
The Baroque was followed by the Classical period. Well, composer said, that multiple mixing of voices is extraordinary, but music can also be simpler and still extraordinary. They started to write melodies for one instrument and had other instruments accompany that melody. Instead of playing loud or soft, they started using crescendo, gradually louder, and decrescendo, gradually softer. New musical styles were invented, the symphony. Mozart and Haydn were composers of that period. The classical style was great for composing music for parties, where rich folks loved to dance. A minuet is a dance for ladies with beautiful fardingale dresses and gentlemen with powdered wigs striding elegantly across the dance floor in pairs. Could you see them dance? And did you dance along? The next generation composer said, The music you compose is marvelous, but it's only music. We want music to tell stories, to invoke emotions. We, we want you to see the river Moldau when you listen to music and float along in your mind. We want to creep you out with a story about skeletons dancing in a graveyard. We want to compose music for bigger orchestras than ever before. The Russian composer Tchaikovsky wrote beautiful musical stories with dance, ballet, Swan Lake, The Nutcracker and The Sleeping Beauty. Harianse composed a waltz in the style of a Tchaikovsky ballet. The present. Anything that has been musically invented in the past may be used today. You can combine normal rhythms with very unusual time signatures. There are musical chords that make you wonder if you like them or you'd rather put your fingers in your ears. Adventurous, romantic, exciting. Sometimes composers find new sounds, new styles that way. And the composer always likes to discover something new. Thank you. 